Hey, welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to be getting into the Nahum Con 2024 CTF challenge Elite Malware. I really enjoyed this challenge and this CTF was put on by the most famous cybersecurity content creator, John Hammond. Let's get into it. Jumping right into things here, just before we start off, I do have a blog that you can follow along with over at my website, cyberdonald.com. You'll see the blog here. And I have a visual workflow and a high level summary, a technical workflow summary, and then I kind of get into things, um, but I try and keep it simple uh, and just small chunks. So I'll put the link in the description below, but let's jump right into the challenge here. So 245 points. So if you don't know, this is half the point. So um, out of 227 solves, you had about 1,800 teams complete the first challenge, uh, and this was an easy rated challenge. Jumping right into it, the description just talks about there is a frustrated employee who accidentally ran malware on their computer, and when he tried to pay the lead hacker to get his files back, they said the malware was broken, and the best IT could do is provide a PCAP. So there's a couple things we can think about to narrow down the scope of this challenge. First, there was malware run on the computer, Second, there was some broken files. And thirdly, there was a capture of network data. So let's just go ahead and jump right in to the PCAP here. Taking a look at the PCAP here, right off the bat, we noticed that there is this get request for rans.py. This is gonna be the malware. Following this, we can see there's a response from the server that is delivering over a unsecure, so HTTP protocol, literally just the, the data in plain sight. And this is great. This means we can see the script here and we can see bits and pieces of it, but we'll get back into this in just a second. I want to point out the other files that you'll find in this Wireshark capture. The next one is going to be resources.zip. Then you'll find a ecorp.png, welcomeaboard.pdf, and most importantly, this one right here, id underscore rsa. And there was also resources.zip. Did I include that? I don't know. If I didn't, resources.zip, that's an important one. All right, let's go ahead and analyze that rans.py. Taking a look at the script here, we can see there are really three principal functions. Firstly, there's a comment. Don't forget to change the key. This is a huge clue. Following this, we see key equals ranbytes32. So we know that there we have a 32 character key if this wasn't changed, which we know it wasn't because this was the, the malware or the rans.py that was in fact sent over the network in this scenario. Following, we see the next principal function in the script is to encrypt files. So this is like kind of some silly makeshift, you know, beginner level um, semi ransomware just to get us familiar with the idea of it. So following this, we see files are encrypted using the XOR function with data and the key. And then those files are sent. So back to the, the callback server uh, or, or just wherever um, over leet port 1337. And that's, that's just like the, the core of this script. So what we need to do is figure out how we can take advantage of this script. And I think ultimately break the encryption. And what we have that makes this very unique is a short key that is just very simply XORed. This is not a secure way to encrypt a file because it's vulnerable to a known plain text attack. What we can do is if we know what some of the information is, uh, we can make educated guesses and try and uncover the key. However, in this challenge, what makes it um, an easy rated challenge is we're actually given that plain text via the files that we have because we can look at the encrypted files and we know for a fact that for an ID RSA key, there is a header that's there and it's the same every time, begin open SSH key. So we can use that. So let's go ahead and take a look. The reason we're going with the RSA key in this case, at least for me, was I found the header in the other files just wasn't long enough to meet the 32 characters of the key. But taking a look here at our RSA key, Looking at the header of the file, we can see it starts with begin open SSH private key. And this is the same for every RSA key, unless maybe there's the 1% when you go off and kind of do your own thing. But this is generally going to be the same header with every RSA key. 
And this is what we're going to take advantage of because we know what it starts with. So let's take a look now at the first 32 bytes of this file, but let's look at it in hexadecimal. Okay, I know this might be uh, not so easy on the eyes here, but the point to take away here is just the hexadecimal is going to be the same. It's going to represent the header, the first uh, up to 32, I think in this case, it's maybe 32 bytes brings us to just the end of the first line of the SSH key or a couple characters before, but this is going to, going to be key. And what we're going to do to conduct an XOR attack is we're going to reverse engineer this by just taking the encrypted data and the known plain text and XORing them together. And the output should be the key. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, this is decode FR and it's going to be our XOR decoder that helps us. So there's three things we need. First, we need the text to be XORed. This is going to be our known plain text. So let's go ahead and get that hexadecimal from the RSA key header that we just looked at. So this is our known plain text header up here. The next thing we're going to need is the hexadecimal key. This is going to be our encrypted data, the first 32 bytes. So let's go ahead and grab that from the Wireshark file. Here it is. So we can see that the request, the data was preceded with the RSA document being uploaded. And we go over to the actual data and we just simply copy the value in order to get that data. And let's jump back over to our XOR cipher. And here we are. So we're going to take that data, just the first 32 bytes, and it's going to become our hexadecimal key. All right, we have our hexadecimal key here. And the next thing we'll need to do is just change our results to hexadecimal and we'll run the encryption. And this is going to be our key. So we'll copy this, our key, and let's go ahead and pivot over to CyberChef. Here we are in CyberChef with our key. We'll add that to the XOR recipe or cipher here. And for the input, let's go ahead and verify this is working by taking the data from the RSA key and seeing if it appears decrypted with this XOR key. So back over to Wireshark, let's copy our data for the RSA key and see if we can decrypt it. Here we are, we'll enter our data and initially we can't read it, but if we add the from hexadecimal, we can see we have successfully encrypted the SSH key. All right. So now to cross the finish line, we just have to go and decrypt the other files. Let's go ahead and decrypt the welcome aboard.pdf. Let's pivot back over to Wireshark. Here is the welcome aboard.pdf. And again, this is the file being uploaded to the server, thanks to the rans.py malware. And we can see welcome aboard.pdf consists of four pa data packets. So let's go ahead and copy all these the same way we did with the other data that we extracted. All right, we can see here that I have all the data in the input field and in the output field, we see PDF. Okay, well, that's not the most helpful, but we're gonna have to go ahead and download this just to make sure it's working, but we can see the headers there. So this is good. Let's go ahead and download it. All right, wow, it worked. So in here, we can see that we have a unique password to access this zip file. And we know a zip file was uploaded and sent over the network. So let's take this password and go ahead and carve out that zip file and see what's inside. Back over here in Wireshark, we have our packet here, resources.zip. So we'll go ahead and extract the data the same way we have done in the last two files. Pivoting back over to CyberChef, pasting the data in here. I can already see the header. Let's go ahead and save this output to a file and see if we can then extract or attempt to extract the files from resources.zip. Okay, and sure enough, inside the resources.zip file, we see the flag, but when we go to open it, we're prompted for the password. So let's paste in the password that we got from the PDF file. ecorp2024 new user, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And huzzah, it works. There's the flag. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. See everyone in the next video.